In this video, I will cover Objective 2.2, Compare and Contrast Common Networking Hardware Devices for the CompTIA A Plus 220-1001 exam. Here is a list of devices we will cover in this video. A few devices you, sh you should be very familiar with are routers, switches, access points, firewalls, and network interface cards. You should have an understanding of the other components, however, Almost everything you do dealing with networks will involve a combination of these devices. Routers are probably the most important device when it comes to sending and receiving data between networks or over the internet. Routers connect two or more networks such as LANs and forwards data between these networks. A router is necessary when sending data to a device on a different network or subnet. Routers are layer 3 devices. They function on the network layer of the OSI model and forwards packets. These packets are forwarded based on the IP address of the destination device. The routers use routing tables that list various networks in which route the data should take to reach that network. This is done at each router until the packet reaches its final destination. Routers also connect LANs to WANs, so connecting your home's private internal network to the public internet, or connecting a business's intranet to the public internet. There are many types of routers such as small office home office routers such as Linksys. These are small routers you can buy from an electronic store. Enterprise routers are larger more powerful, contain more features, and are more expensive. You won't find these in your local electronics store. Switches are a central component of all networks. Switches connect devices to the network. These devices are typically all on the same network or subnet. Switches are layer 2 devices that forward frames and operate on the data link layer of the OSI model. Switches forward frames based on the MAC address of the destination device. Switches have MAC address tables. The MAC address in these tables correspond to a port on the switch. Switches reduce or even eliminate collision domains. Each port on a switch is its own collision domain. If there is one device on a port and it is in full duplex, then no collisions can occur. Switch port speeds can typically range from 10 megabits per second on older switches to 100 gigabits per second on more advanced switches. Devices connect to a switch in what is referred to as a star topology. In a star topology, each device is individually connected to a port on a switch. Switches can be managed or unmanaged. We'll go over the difference between these two in the next slide. The standards that relate to switches are 802.3 standards. Managed switches are typically used on larger enterprise networks. They allow for greater control and optimization. Managed switches also can be accessed remotely from a browser or secure cell session. This allows the administrator to make configuration changes to the devices located miles away or even on the other side of the world. Managed devices can be monitored for uptime, errors, and access management. Unmanaged switches are plug-and-play devices and are ready to go out of the box. These types of switches are typically used in small office or home office networks. You are not able to log in or access unmanaged switches remotely and they do not allow for configuration changes. Due to the simplicity of unmanaged switches, they are relatively cheaper than manage switches. Access points are networking devices that connect wireless devices to the wired network. Data is sent over the air using radio waves. These radio waves can be 2.4 or 5 gigahertz frequencies. A few other terms you should be familiar with are WAP for wireless access point, which is another term for access points. A WLAN is a wireless local access network similar to a LAN, but contains a group of wireless devices connected to the same network. A SSID, 
or service set identifier is the name of the wireless network that devices connect to. These are the names you see in the list of available networks on a wireless device. Cloud-based network controllers provide centralized management of network devices and they are accessible from the net internet. They allow administrator to manage, configure, and monitor devices on the network. They can be physical hardware or software or a combination of both. They're useful for automating tasks as well. Firewalls monitor incoming and outgoing network traffic. They pr protect against unwanted intrusion into a network or system. Firewalls act as a barrier between trusted and untrusted networks, such as a LAN that is trusted in, a, uh, in the untrusted internet. Firewalls can be built in to networking devices, such as small home office, home office equipment, or they can be standalone hardware for enterprises or software, such as the firewall built into the Windows operating system. Network interface cards, also pronounced NIC cards, allows a device to connect to a network either wired or wirelessly. They can be integrated into the motherboard or separate add-on cards that can be placed in expansion slots. Each NIC card has a unique MAC address and is a permanent number that is built in or burned in at the time of manufacturing. These cards allow for Ethernet connections using a RJ45 connector and unshielded twisted pair cabling. These devices usually have status lights near the port that indicate connectivity and activity of the link. Repeaters extend the range of existing signals. Repeaters can be used to extend the range of wired and wireless networks. The range for standard ethernet cabling is 100 meters. Repeaters allow connecting devices that extend this length. They also extend or strengthen a wireless signal where it is too weak or non-existent. Hubs are the original connection device for connecting devices together on a network. They look similar to a switch but function very differently. When a computer sends data to the hub, the data is sent out all the ports and only the device the data is meant for accepts the data. This is very inefficient and causes collisions on the network. Only two devices can communicate with each other at a time. The others must wait until the path is clear. Hubs are not used in modern networks. Cable and DSL modems connect small office and home office networks to the internet. Cable modems connect to the internet using an RG6 connector for coax cable DSL modems use RJ11 connectors for telephone wire cabling. Devices on the network connect to the modem using RJ45 connectors or over the air using wireless. Bridges can connect or separate two or more networks. This can increase the size of the network or reduce the size of the network. Bridges can act as a repeater extending the range of the network. They also reduce the network traffic and increase bandwidth. There are wireless and wired bridges and they operate on the layer two of the OSI model. Patch panels are hardware equipment for terminating network cabling. Cables are ran throughout a building from multiple rooms and locations to a central location, such as a network closet or data center. These cables are terminated on the back of the patch panel. The patch cables are then ran from the front of the patch panel to the switches. This makes connecting to network equipment easier and more manageable. Power over Ethernet is an Ethernet standard of sending power along with data over twisted pair cabling. Power over Ethernet can deliver between 15.4 and 100 watts of power. The power sourcing equipment is the, de the device supplying the power such as a switch. Power devices are the devices receiving the power such as a VoIP phone or access point. 
PoE switches are used in larger organizations. Power injectors can be used in smaller networks. Power injectors are separate devices that inject power into a data cable. Ethernet over power is the opposite of power over Ethernet. Data is sent over existing electrical lines. This is called power line communication and typically uses 120 volts AC electrical cabling. This is typically used in areas where running Ethernet cabling is difficult, but electrical already exists. Adapters with Ethernet ports plug into the power outlets. Devices then can connect to the adapters to send data signals over the electrical wiring. This has been a Quick Bytes education video. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.